Hi, this is part two of Instruments Essentials in Music Maker 2023, and I hope that you've watched part one, as I'm not going to repeat everything. In part one of this tutorial, we went through the essential things that you need to know to get VST instruments working up to recording. In this part two, we'll look at recording and the MIDI objects created. I'm using Music Maker 2023, which is version 31 something, along with Premium Edition 2022. You will probably see some things that you don't have, especially if you're using the free version. As I pointed out in part one, an ASIO driver is needed to play VST instruments, so you should have already selected one under Program Settings, Audio MIDI tab, Audio Playback. I've selected the M Audio driver because I have an M Audio M Track interface. Make sure that the playback marker and the yellow range bar are where you want to start and that you're not going to record on a track over an existing MIDI object that you want to keep. Recording will always start at the beginning of the yellow bar and the playback marker will jump there automatically. Other instruments that already have MIDI files or audio clips will play back during recording, unless muted of course. Play using the built-in keyboard, not the one in the instrument interface, or by using the keys on your computer keyboard. I've turned on MIDI record for track 1. I'll change the beat to 100 BPM and turn on the metronome. I'll have eighth notes, so I'll change the grid step size to eighth note. There are a couple of problems here. There's no count in or punch in, so you're best to start playing on the second bar. Also, pressing on the record button turns off the letters on the keyboard so you can't see them until you press a note on the built-in keyboard. You can just remember which letter to press or press on any note on the keyboard during the count in to turn on the letters and delete this later. If you're using an external keyboard, this isn't a problem, just start playing. Press on the red record button to start recording. Count the beats to 4, if in 4-4 four, four time, and play. Press the space bar to stop recording. A MIDI file is now on the arranger. Let's add in some drums, ideally using just the bass drum, a snare, and a cymbal. I'm not a drummer, so I'll do what I can and edit later. Alarm Track 4, Vita 2, Acoustic Drum Kit Ballad, and with a playback marker at the beginning, press Record. Count in, and play along with the piano recording. Press Space or the Stop button. We now have a MIDI object for the drums. Let's take a look at what we recorded with the piano in the MIDI editor. To open it, select the MIDI object and press on the MIDI editor button, or use the shortcut Y, or simply double click on the MIDI object. Now we can see what we played. The center part is called the piano roll editor. The notes are displayed as bars that can be edited with the mouse. The keyboard is at the left. If the notes are blue, they are not selected, but if they're yellow, they have been selected. The first time that you come into the MIDI editor, they will probably all be selected, so dragging one note will drag them all. I'll check that the grid quantization value is 16 for more precision. If you look closely at the notes, you'll see that they're slightly off. I'll press on the Q for quantize and the notes jump to the nearest grid line. Click in a blank area to turn off the selection of notes. Now I can adjust single notes. Selection mouse mode is turned on by default. You can move the notes around and extend or shorten the notes by using your mouse. To add a note, click on the pencil. Add the note. Turn off the pencil if not needed by clicking on the arrow to get back to selection mode. To remove a note, right click on it. I'll fix up some of my notes to make some longer and to correct any errors, and I have several. You can turn on the MIDI event list that shows details of the notes in the order that they were played. Volume is controlled by the velocity and you can turn this on by clicking on the Show Velocity button. 
You can adjust the velocity by adjusting the height of the bars from 1 to 100 or by typing in a value in the MIDI event list. I'll cover more of the basics of using the MIDI editor in another tutorial. It would be a good idea to look at the buttons and menus and start reading up on how to use the MIDI editor. I'll play back the modified arrangement. I'm done, so I'll go back to the arranger by clicking on OK. Drums are different. I'll select the drums object and open the MIDI editor. We see the same interface, but this is not how we edit drums. At the top left, open the drum editor and the keyboard is replaced by a listing of the general MIDI drum map. Look at the listing. We see the key that's played and the corresponding instrument. As I mentioned in part 1, B0 and C1 are the bass drum. The recorded notes, called events, are shown in the cells. Unlike other instruments, the events don't have a duration. Thus make sure that you have the grid quantization value granular enough for your drum playing. I'll set this to 16 and press Q to quantize the drum notes. Clicking on one of the instruments will preview it and open a second line with more information. Obviously, moving a note or event up or down by dragging will likely change it to a different instrument. You'll notice that some of the instruments are repeated, like the bass drum, meaning that you get the same instrument sound by pressing on different keys. This is to facilitate playing. Also. Some of the instruments on the list do not correspond to the instrument that the synthesizer plays, like D-sharp 1. It says clap, but playing it gives a snare drum roll. Other Vita percussion instruments usually have completely different drum mappings. You can create your own mapping and modify the instruments to correspond to the keys used by the synthesizer. I'm not a drummer, so I'll fix up this object by drawing in the events that I want. Done! I'll play back my song. Hmm, need something more. I'll copy the piano MIDI object down to the Vita All Brass track by holding down Ctrl and dragging to make a copy. I want to add a single brass note at the end, but with a downward slur, an articulation. I'll go to the Pop Brass track, arm it, place the playback marker where I want the MIDI object, right click in a blank area, create a new object, create a new MIDI object, and select Empty One Bar. I can adjust the duration of the MIDI object by dragging the right end in or out. Just make sure that looping is not turned on. Double click to open the empty object. I checked where to put this with a last drum hit, so I'll draw a note there. I need an articulation. In the instrument editor, the articulation at D1 gives me the sound that I want. In the MIDI editor, I need to turn this on before the note is played. So I'll add in a short note on D1 just before the note to be played. Solo playback. And that is what I want. Okay. Maybe some bass. I'll add in another instrument, Vita 2, then get basses and clear bass. I'll make another copy of the MIDI file, open it, and drag everything down one octave. Let's try that. That's it. We've covered the essentials of using VST instruments, so you should be able to get started yourself. Play around with the instruments, experiment. You can purchase more instruments through the store and obtain third-party instruments. For third-party instruments, you'll need access to VST plugins, which is not included in the free edition of Music Maker. You can get this in the store, but you're best to purchase the Plus edition, or better still, the Premium edition. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. Until next time, make music.